so I just wanted to make a quick video just to show you the code I've written and the projects I've worked on for projects. So sometimes it's easier to show a video than it is to um, than it is to read through all the documents. It'll make more sense of it this way. So um, I've made an Angular two app. It hooks into two different APIs. Um, one is a, a website called Untapped, which is a a beer related website so that appeals to me and the other one is a custom API that I've made which just allows me to take uh, beers from the untapped website and put them at venues from the untapped website because that's not something that they allow you to do um, so yeah so that's what I do and my my angular 2 app is is going to be angular 2 um, with Ionic 2 framework sitting on top for styling and just functionality and that's wrapped up in a Cordova um, wrapper I suppose uh, and then run on a run on a smartphone um, it's, it's all working it's not really styled as such it's, it's a really a proof of concept but it works pretty well I'm just going to run you through it first up I'll show you my development environment um, been using a piece of software called Atom it's really nice a very basic text editor just well, not a text editor, it's almost an IDA, it's very lightweight, but it, it's it's just nice to work in. Um, so this is, oh, no, that's not. This is Atom. Um, this is my project. The bulk of what I use um, is in the source folder. There are four main subfolders here. We've got app, assets, pages, and theme. We'll go through them in order. Um, well, first of all, we'll start off here. This is where the app starts, in the index file, index HTML. Um, so this is where it loads up all of the JavaScript that it needs, the CS, so JavaScript, CSS styles, uh, polyfills, and the main, which is which is the Java that's generated. And hit right here, this is the root component, the Ion app, which is populated by the entire application, which you'll find in the, the root, the, the, the bootstrap part of it is this, the app component. So this is a this is a TypeScript object. Uh, TypeScript is very, very similar to C-sharp, um, developed by the same people, I believe. Really nice and easy to work in. If you see here, we've got... Oh, what have I done? <clears throat> what have I done? Yeah, yeah. so we've got... Um, we've just got a class here. And then within the class, we've got our methods, and we've got properties here. Constructor's a little bit odd. Um, so looks like a normal constructor but then you'll notice in here um, we're declaring these these different objects this is called dependency injection so we can actually it's it's a different slightly different take on how to um, instantiate objects we don't normally you know we'd instantiate them up here um, in the in the properties if you want them to instantiate at the start here we can instantiate them in, inside the constructor there's a few benefits to this which I won't go into but um, that's the way Angular 2 works, and it's it makes life quite easy um, later on if you change the structure of these objects, basically. Um, we define our menu in here. Um, yeah, so that's the app component. Also within this app folder, we have got services. So these are the services, the web services. I've got four, which is probably too many. I think I spoke in my projects about combining these together. But we've got beer service, We've got user service, we've got venue service, and we've got auth service. Uh, auth service deals with authentication and handles check-ins. Beer service with the requests for beer data. Um, user service is all of the user requests. And venue service, anything to do with, with venues. So yeah, I, I think we should probably combine them. A bit of refactoring required there, it's a bit overkill. Um, there, there were smaller services than I envisaged in the end. Um, assets just contains um, assets just contains assets. So at this stage, we've only got an ion, ionic um, icon. Pages. This is this is the other place that we um, spend a lot of time. So this is where I define all the different pages of the application. So you'll see here we've got um, we've got venue list and venue details. This app is really a is really a list of details application. So for each one, we've got a list and then a details page, and then we see here beer list and beer details. This is hello. World. This is the home page. This is the default page that came with the template, and item details and list. This was just the sample 
uh, page that came it needs to be deleted really. So yeah, if we look into one of these, so if beer list for example, each one of these folders, the list is made, the page is made up of three main files. Um, we've got we've got the the TypeScript file, which is it's really your controller for the page there. So there's your class. Here are your here are your methods, and here are any properties needed. You've got the HTML, which is the template for the page, the view. Um, so this is written. This is this is Ionic. We're using a lot of the Ionic framework just for nice, easy styling. Here we use Ionic button, uh, Ion list. Yeah. And the third final file is a CSS file, which will give style to this page. I haven't really put anything in here yet. But yeah, these two files you can see the JavaScript and the JavaScript.map are. These are created during the transpile process. So the TypeScript is transpiled down to JavaScript, which is then what's deployed onto the phone. We we don't run native Java uh, TypeScript, sorry, in the browser or on the phone. We we compile down to um, JavaScript ES5, I think it is in this case. Yeah. So if we look at, just to give you a quick idea of how this works. If we look into the the controller on the back end, say here for example we've got um, selected beer. So this is loaded. What page are we on? Beer details, right? So selected beer. This beer. Oh, where does it come in? Beer ID. So we we get the beer ID and then we go and get the beer. Oh yeah, okay. So on a net is the is basically runs as soon as the object is initialized. So we get a nav parameters we come in, which is bid beer ID. Um, so that's in there, and then on a net we run the the proper the bleh, method get beer, which will then call the beer service. It'll go online with an asynchronous method. It'll get beer, and it will push it into this selected beer. Okay, so then we've got an object which is a beer, which it comes back as a JSON object, so it instantly transforms into a Java object, JavaScript object. Sorry. Uh, so we've got selected beer. If we look at the um, the view. See here, we've got selected beer, selected beer, selected beer, all through here. So we can actually um, data bind from the front end to the back. This is quite cool. Um, ngif. See, we have two here, two ngifs. Um, this one, selected beer response. So we're looking for an object selected beer, and then then an object within it called response. Um, so ngif this if it exists, but in this case we have an exclamation mark, which means if it doesn't exist. So if it hasn't been loaded yet, then and bear in mind this is data bound to the back end, then wait, then display this loading, wait, wait, wait. And then the next one here, we have NGF again and it's selected bear response again, but this time there's no exclamation mark, which means if it does exist. So when selected bear response doesn't exist because it hasn't loaded yet, it will show loading wait wait. As soon as it does exist, and it, and it won't show this. As soon as it does exist, then this isn't true anymore. This will disappear, and this will appear. And then we show the object selected bear response, the bear section, and then at the very, very end in the structure, we show the bear name, the bear ABV, obviously the strength, um, the brewery name, and the description. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so that's really, really cool. We can, and that's all data bound, so that works really well. Uh, so it won't show any invalid data, it will just, the NGF will hide it. If you take this off and try and show the selected beer before it exists, it will throw an exception. So, like that. Really like that little bit of functionality, it really gives you a lot of flexibility. So that's basically the, oh, there's one other folder, isn't there, theme, which is, yeah, it's just the um, CSS styles, but it's um, SCSS, the S, uh, whatever it's called, SAS, you know, it, it's, the, the, it can be compiled down, so it's it's an object-oriented version of CSS, and this is compiled down by the Onyx server and creates CSS files that are then shipped out. So, how do we get all of this into motion? Let's have a look. We then use okay, yep. So that's in here. On our we crank up Ionic has its own built-in web server which will transpile and create the JavaScript we need and it will then run it in a local browser for us to have a play with. So this one's running here. Is this one running or is this the wrong one? Wait a second. What's it doing? It's trying to rebuild the app. Where's it going to build it to? I think here. We shall see. 
it's not happy at the minute. Okay, here we go. So it's off. Right. We don't want to go to Yahoo. Why is it on the Yahoo? Right. So this is my untapped page. This is the um, this is the website, the front end of the of the website that I built an API for. So this is just some test check-ins that I've done. Let's see when we get something we're expecting. So it's just compiling at the minute. It's going to pop up somewhere in a web browser shortly. Let's see where. Come on. Come on. Come on. Another bit. 24 seconds. Crazy. We don't have it yet. We can't be far away. No, yes, no, yes. Let's try and bang it out like all those. What was when you want it to go fast, eh? Here we go. So the SAS is starting. I guess that's what's slowing it down. Webpack, 74 seconds. And here we go. Right, so here we go. Now we've got a web server up. Sorry about the delay. Whoop. We should have something. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, so there we go. Let's just try and change something to show you. It will compile quicker this time. So where is Atom? Let's go to the the app list. The no, not the app list. The venue list. Venue. Let's change that list and save. You'll notice this cranks into life straight away. We're rebuilding. And where are we? Here we go. She's rebuilding. Oh, I'm not going to wait. Here we go. Quicker this time. So there, venue list. That's updated straight away. That's a live update. Okay. This is our phone version. So this is the phone emulator that comes with Apple. Let's go to venue list. She's on a bit of a go slide. Maybe too much open. Let's close Xcode. Let's get rid of that. So that still says venues, okay? So we're going to rebuild this now. Let's get rid of this. So to rebuild to the phone, we're going to run Ionic Emulate. So this will do the same process, but rather than build to the browser, it will build directly to the phone. Um, I've discovered there's, I mean, you can do most of the stuff you need to do in the browser, and it can be quite quick and flexible, and it's constantly transpiling while you're building. But it's actually quite nice to um, work on a phone, because some of the features don't work in the browser. Um, I have been building some real life phone as well, but uh, the, the emulator is pretty good. So, and also uh, well, for this, for the sake of this um, demonstration, obviously you can't see my phone, whereas this can sit quite happily on here. Oh, hold on, device. Let's press home button. There we go. So we're back on the home page of the phone. We should start to see it coming up now. It's all very slow. All very slow tonight. Let's close some stuff down. What else is running? Need all these. So I'm just going to show you a check-in, really. Can't do that from the browser. That will only work from the actual phone or the phone. Come on. You know you want it. Maybe we'll do a little bit of editing when we get this onto YouTube. Come on. Hopefully it doesn't take 73 seconds again. Oh, it's starting to feel like it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, that's going to show you what it's waiting. Uh, nothing, really. Uh, oh, we've got a little bit of life over there. Yeah, so it's that web pack again. It wasn't taking this long earlier. 
Here we go. 93 seconds. Bonkers. One, two, three, four. Let's close these and tidy up all the way there. Maybe that was what was slowing it down. We got a little bit of life here. Oh, oh, phone's come back to life. Looks like the server's moving along, doing something, building target. Build target my app project. Well, yeah. Come on. Build succeeded. Woohoo! Where is it? Mm -hmm. Here it comes. My app, here she comes, whoa. Two minutes later. So I'm just gonna quickly show you a, a check-in, okay. So let's go, what do we want, Google Chrome. Over there, <laughs> and we got our check-in. Okay, so let's refresh this, so you know I'm not doing magic. So my last check-in was 37 minutes ago. Let's go to the Bel Air Tavern, to who knows finest. Oh, you know what, we're gonna to need to log into Untap first. Hold on, so. Come on. Okay. Hello Ionic, my home page. Let's log into Untapped. So this is using zero auth login. Come on. Okay, we'll log in. We've got this, so that gives me my token just to show me that I've got a token, just a little bit of debugging I left in there. Um, okay, let's go. Oh, there comes the token again. Okay, come on. Let's go to the venues. And where do we want to go? We'll go to the Bel Air. Yep. And I've only got one beer, so we better drink it. See, so as we showed before, loading, loading, wait, wait. There we go. So it's talked to the API. It's got the beer. Um, so we can rate the beer between one and f zero and five. Sorry, a bit laggy tonight. She's not very happy about the camper. So let's give it four out of five, and then we can check in. That needs to say check in, really, doesn't it? So we should get some debugging back. It's pretty. I need to put a nice. Um, toast up there rather than that, but that's just showing me that something is coming back, which is fantastic. So we've got status 200 okay. And we come back to the API at Untapped, or the main front page at Untapped. Neil is drinking a Sutton Who by Townsend Brewing at the Bel Air Tavern. I've got all these badges. Fantastic. Four out of five there. So we've posted successfully to the API. So yeah, there we go. That just wanted to give you a demo. Not the prettiest app you'll ever see. And uh, a lot of styling to do. But you know what? It connects to two different APIs. It pulls everything together quite nice and efficiently. Um, it works with off zero off. Um, I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. It's cool. It was a bit of a battle, and um, yeah, thanks for pushing me along to do that. There we go. So yeah, cheers.